All right, we're gonna have a deck plate supper tonight. I'm kind of pissed, but not pissed. Uh, I get there and the restaurant is closed. And uh, I, I'd seen some of the reviews on Trucker Path, like, you know, restaurant closes early or whatever. I thought, well, I'll get there about six o'clock and you know they'll be open but anyway they had uh in the hot box they had their stuff from the restaurant there got a half a rack of ribs they're okay i mean they use a little bit more smoke flavor i like to bark mine up a little bit more than that but baked beans they give me a whole thing of baked beans so one bad at all so we're gonna eat it and, and get back on the road i just uh not 100 percent impressed and i can see where you know it's hard to keep a restaurant in business when you operate like that. So, anyway. go check in at the visitor center so uh, I had a feeling that that was the case most of these most of these facilities uh, these military places they have a one spot where oh, they have one spot where trucks check in and uh, it's got truck parking and stuff like that I, I knew when that place didn't have truck parking I, I knew I was in trouble so we are gonna go down here and try this one more time. So hang tight guys, we are Well That was a cluster you know what of epic proportions. We finally got unloaded, but I don't I don't know what goes I I don't know what goes on with this place, this Air Force Base here, but like, I've never had that much trouble getting onto a base. So, to start off with, I went to the gate, the wrong gate. You saw that. And, uh, so I had to go down to the next gate, and that was cool. I went up just like I did it, done it every other military installment. Pull up to the gate, open the doors, pop the hood, you know, that, that whole spiel there. So I go in, and we don't... Uh, I'm already like I've already sent in all my all my stuff for approval. Like I didn't want to, uh, but to try and help get this thing better, I sent all my all my information to uh, to make this easier. That I was pre-approved. That I could just scoot on through here, and I should have known that uh, just scooting on through there wasn't gonna necessarily. Uh, work out like it sounded. Usually if it's way easier than what it sounds, or if it uh, sounds really easy, it's not going to be that easy. But, uh, basically I went in there and like uh, showed them my driver's license and uh, they need to know my date of birth, social security number and all that. And we did 
deal. And they said, do you have another form of ID? I said, sure, here's my tweet card. Now keep in mind, my tweet card is expired. I went to renew it about a week ago and it still hasn't come in. So, but I've been on several military bases with my, using that as proof of another ID. You know, of course they had, do you have your passport or your social security number? All that bull crap that you're, your social security card, all that bull crap that you're not gonna have. Yeah, no, I do not have that. I'm 800 miles from home. I just can't uh, go jump in my in my truck and go a couple blocks down the road and get it. So basically, I, I got mad and I, you know, I was like, screw it. I'm taking this stuff right back to Arkansas. Just, just piss on it. And uh, anyway, I called my my guy I haul for. I'm like, hey, uh, here's the deal. And he's like, man, I'll call you back. Well, in the meantime, the girl from the construction company calls me and she's like, hey, uh, well, I know, I understand we got a problem. She said, I'm working on it. Okay. So apparently the guy, one of the guys that works there is a, uh, he's a retired major in the Air Force. And, uh, he come to meet me and he said, we're going to, we're going to go up in there and try and get you in. I'm going to try and get you, get, get you in as a sponsor. So we go up in there and they're like, nope, ain't going to do it. And, uh, about the only way to do it would be, uh, get a, another proof of photo ID. Well, that's what kills me. You can have a photo ID or you can have your social security card. Well, I mean, you can have this fake-ass social security card that has your number on it or whoever's number on it. Flash it to them and they'd let you in. But uh, an expired Twig card that has my picture on it and my name, no, that's not good enough. And, uh, I mean, I kind of get it, but I kind of don't. You know, with military, everything's black and white, so I get it. But, you know, common sense and reason would be like, oh, okay, go in there and go in there and, uh, and uh, you know, once I got in there, like 30 minutes, go in there and spend 30 minutes in there and get you unloaded. So, anyway, I ended up calling my cousin and my cousin went to the shop and got my pickup, found the receipt where I renewed my twig last week took a picture of it, sent it to me. I showed it to the uh, to the head guy at the visitor center. He paid, printed me a visitor's card, and me and the uh, me and the other guy, the, the construction guy, we were on our way. The construction guy was my sponsor too, or going to be my sponsor to get into the game. And that that sponsor deal is okay for recreation or leisure, but it's not okay for business. And I'm like, I am bringing a building in here to make your Air Force base better, but whatever. So, we get back to this pickup, we go back to my truck, they go through my truck for the third time, and uh, I go in there, and the girl in there, she, man, I tell you, she was, she was tough. She actually called the visitor center and asked if they printed me that card. That card has a barcode in it on it that she has to scan herself. I'm like, where in the world would I get something like that? What is she? I, I don't know. But anyway, I got in. 30 minutes later, I'm out of there. And uh, it's just a bunch of hoopla. So uh, I should have had my twig renewed before now. But uh, Places around me that renew twigs only do it like on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And it's like, I don't know, those are like three days that ain't don't work for me. I don't know why they can't do them on Monday. So. But regardless, I've got my twig coming. We shouldn't have this problem again. But I did not know this, and they would have let me in if I would have had this. But, and I don't know, nobody at my DMV mentioned this when I. Uh, renew my driver's license. If they did, I didn't know what the hell they talked about. If you, uh, 
there's a thing where I, I guess you can get federal, federally approved to register or something like that and have this star on your driver's license. So if you have that, then uh, if you have that, you ain't got to produce two forms of ID. At the uh, at the DMV. So anyway, we're gonna get off here and get on down to our next load down here and get our coals and go from there. All right, here we are. We made our pickup point here at this steel mill over in Huger, South Carolina. I'm sitting here. I've been sitting here waiting. 30 minutes or so waiting on this guy to finish all these coals up but uh, apparently these two coals that I'm picking up are one coal now and I'm kind of pissed off about it but it was on the rate confirmation and that's what happens when you are trying to load unload do all your crap and uh, keep yourself busy figure up all your miles try and keep up with your if to try and do everything that you do while you're loading and unloading and uh i missed missed the mark on that one it actually had uh when i got my paperwork of the shipping receiving office it had one coal 45 45 000 pounds or something like that and i'm just like I then drove almost two hours down here to get this down some back country roads and twisting, turning, and had to go 20 miles out of my way for a dang truck detour. So I'm not really in the mood to go book another load. Uh, I, I'm just going to suck this one up. Uh, it's not that I, I, you know, I'm scared of hauling coal, a single coal or anything like that. I've hauled. A gazillion of them but i've also tore up a bunch of trailers doing it and i just i'm not into i'm not into tearing trailers up i'm into uh keeping keeping my stuff nice and you know i mean they ride like crap when you load them up and i mean it beats a dang truck to death just beats everything to death i mean like i just i don't like hauling them i mean it just it like i said it ain't because i'm scared of them because i've hauled a many of them many 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 of them and uh but i've just tore up a lot of trailers uh and i would have never ever i mean he told me on the phone it was two coals forty-five thousand pounds i'm like that's kind of odd you know you don't see that much anymore uh like you used to uh you see more singles so anyway long story short i guess i'm gonna haul it because uh it pays good and uh I just, I'm not in the mood after all the fiasco with the Air Force Base and being three hours there getting screwed around. I'm just not in the mood to uh, sit and uh, go find another load because I probably had to deadhead no telling how far and uh, do, the, do the same thing again. So uh, I'm going to suck this one up, take one for the team and uh, ride on just do the best i can with it but at, like this guy in front of me he is getting two coals and i've yet to understand I, i've seen I, I don't understand why people belly load two coals i mean it, it just it makes absolutely no sense to me i mean if you belly load two coals and uh more power to you but i mean if you can spread it out make it ride better i mean i would rather if I'm going five, 600 miles with a load of coals uh, and I got a choice between belly loading them and uh, using one tarp and or splitting them up and using two tarps, I'm using two tarps. Just gonna, I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, I ain't gonna use but a piece of that one, uh, each tarp anyway, so. But I just, I'm not into how they ride. I'm not into the wear and tear, how hard it is on, on, the, uh, on the trailers themselves just putting belly load and stuff so anyway we're gonna suck it up they uh they told me it's gonna be a little bit don't look like nobody gets in a hurry at this joint so i guess i'm gonna sit here and sweat 
more to come. Steel mill deal works. All these coals in there, and this dude's been digging for 15 minutes trying to find up under all these other ones. I guess we'll wait and see. thing loaded we got uh, got six car six chains on it it is uh, 45,000 pounds but uh, we end up having to we run short on j-hook so I had to go double pipe spool on this chain right here so uh, plenty of securement that needed about uh, it needed just to touch over four chains I think it needed five just barely needed five but i went ahead and put six on it because uh hey it ain't gonna hurt uh gonna hurt for me to have exercise and to have another chain on it so we're gonna ride on and try and get this thing over to alabama Whew. it's hot today hot 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 all right we just stopped and got some duncan's donuts i guess we need to jump out here Check on this donut back here. Uh, check the chains. Good, good. Good, 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 good. Alright. We ain't got a lot of time. I stopped at this pilot here. I think this is Granitesville, South Carolina, or something like that. They didn't have a lick of coffee in there, so uh I had to wait like 20 minutes on them to make some coffee. I was pretty pissed, so I got to get going, make up some time now. We gone. Okay, here's a quick little uh, uh, tutorial or whatever you want to call it. See, there's a lot of the arch that's out of my trailer now, now that I put this coil on it. So once that arch goes down this back axle, the frame will actually kind of come up back here. So I cut these mud flap weights. They're supposed to be three inches off the ground. They're supposed to be three inches off the ground and now they're more like five so that's uh like two inches that it's uh that it's affecting my trailer and essentially what this back axle does and the the more arch you get out of your trailer 
when you load it, the worse it gets. But this back axle will actually float and be bouncing back here if you put enough weight in the center of it. So, and also with the airbags, like when they pick this thing up, they pick it up all at once and the leveling valves don't have enough time to respond. So I am going to go ahead and dump the air on my trailer. So otherwise it will hyper Otherwise, when they lift it up, my my airbags are just... So, anyway, we're going in here, and they want me to pull in here and unchain this thing, so that's what we're going to do.